If you're just getting started with Notion, then this is the video for you. Notion can be super overwhelming right at the beginning, but I promise you it gets easier. Once you've learned the basics, you'll be creating aesthetic pages like this in no time. In today's video, I'll be covering all the basics, including how to create pages, style them, and how to use all of Notion's many different block types, and I'll even introduce you to Notion's most advanced feature, databases. Don't worry, this tutorial is super beginner friendly and will explain everything in simple terms. Let's get started. Notion is kind of like a mix between Excel and a note-taking app like Evernote. So it's a productivity and note-taking web application that offers a range of organizational tools where you can plan and track pretty much anything. It's particularly great for things like task management, project tracking, and to-do lists, but you can do much more with it. As an example, I use Notion to track the books I'm reading, travel plans, finances, and so much more. And one of the best parts about it is that Notion is completely free. They do have paid plans, but you only really need those if you have a team or you want to make use of Notion's AI features. So here I am on my dashboard. I do actually have a video that shows you how to build this exact dashboard if you're interested. I will link that in the description box below. But the first thing that I want to show you how to do is how to add a new page. So to do that, you just need to navigate to the sidebar. So if you just hover your mouse over on the left side of the screen, this little sidebar here will appear. You can click on this little arrow button here if you want to lock it into place so that it's always visible. And to add a new page, you simply just want to click on this new page button and then your new page will pop up in the middle. If you do want to make this full screen, you can click on this little arrow button here and that will open it as a full page. I'm just gonna hide this side menu just by clicking on this arrow here. So this is what a blank page looks like. So you can either start with an empty page or you could use one of Notion's templates. So if you click on here, it'll bring up a range of different templates that Notion themselves and other Notion creators have created. So as you can see, there's a lot of different templates here that you can choose from. So you can just click on one of these and it will add this template onto your page. I would also recommend checking out my store for pre-made Notion templates as I have a ton of different options from a reading tracker to a finance tracker and even a second brain, which is an all-in-one productivity system. Now in this example, we're just gonna start with an empty page. So I'm just just going to select this option and that's then going to bring up this completely blank page. So let's start by adding a title. Let's just call this one dashboard. And you can also add icons and cover photos to your pages within Notion. So if you just hover up here, you'll see this add icon button. So I'm just going to click that. It will then pick a random emoji as your icon. So if you actually click on here, you can choose which icon you want to select. So you can pick from the emoji library here. You can use Notion's icon library. They have a ton of really simple but aesthetic icons to choose from. And if you click on this button here, you can actually select the color of the icon. And if you really want to, you can also upload a custom icon here so you can paste in a link to an image you found online and you can also upload a file here but in this case let's just use an emoji I think I'm just going to go with a swirl like this and to add a cover photo again if you just hover up here you can click add cover again Notion will just add a random cover photo so to change it you can click on change cover so you can choose from one of Notion's pre-made cover photos here you can upload an image if you want to you can paste in a link to an image that you found online or you can use Unsplash which is a free stock photo library they have a ton of amazing images on here. I use it a lot. Just to keep it simple, I'm going to use Notion's gallery. So let's go with this orange cover photo here. So it already looks a lot better just by adding the icon and the cover photo. You can also click on the three dots here in the corner for a few more page settings. So if you click on here, you'll see the full width option, which is something that I use a lot. If you select this, it just makes the page wider. So as you can see, there's a lot more space now on the page to work with. You can go with the small text option if you want smaller text. I'm just going to leave that off for now. And you can also change the font as well. So this is the default font you could go with serif which looks like this or mono which looks like this so in this example we're just going to stick with the default but feel free to play around with the fonts there so Notion actually has a long list of different commands that you can incorporate into your spaces. And the easiest way to access the list is by typing a forward slash like this, and you'll see this menu appear. So as you can see, there are a ton of different blocks to choose from. We have text block, to-do list, headings, tables, bullet lists, and there's so much more. This list does go on for a very long time. There are so many different things that you can do inside of Notion. So let's start with a simple one. We're just gonna start with a plain text block. And this is, as you can imagine, where you can type in text. So let's just type type in daily morning routine as an example, and this is what it would look like. Now to get to the next row, you can either just simply hit the enter button, or you can also just use this plus button here, and that will add another block underneath and bring up the menu. Now each of these rows is known as a block, and you can easily move them around. If you just click on the six dots here and just drag, you can easily rearrange them. You can also click on these six dots here to see a range of different options. So things like delete, duplicate, you can turn it into a different type of block, and you can also color the text and the background. So if you go on 
on color here. As you can see, we can select a color for the text. So let's go with blue. As an example, you can also add a background color. So on this one, let's add a background color and let's choose orange. And this is what that looks like. Now there are a ton of other blocks to choose from. So again, I'm just gonna type the forward slash and next I'm gonna show you the page block. So as you can see, once I've clicked that block, it's just brought up a brand new page. So let's just call this one habit tracker as an example. So what the page block does is it adds a new page inside of the current one. So this habit tracker page lives inside of our dashboard page. Now this page could be used for something a little bit more specific. So in this case, a habit tracker, and you can use these breadcrumbs here at the top to see where you are and easily navigate back to the previous page. So let's head back to our dashboard page. So here is that habit tracker page that I've just set up. Now you can also click on this little page icon here to add an icon. So let's just go with this green checkbox here and you can easily visit the page simply just by clicking on it and that will take you over to the new page. And let's just go back to our dashboard. And there are three types of heading blocks which are all different sizes. So we have heading one, which is the biggest. We also have heading two and heading three, which is the smallest. Another useful block is the to-do list block. So this will simply, as you can imagine, add a to-do list. So you can add the name of the task you want to complete and you can actually check this off once it's complete and it will cross it out as you can see. There's also a bullet list, a numbered list, you can use the quote block if you ever want to capture a quote. I don't use this one a ton, but it is quite useful. So let's just add a quote as an example. And this is what the quote block looks like. And another type of block that I use all the time is the call out block, which actually just makes your text stand out a little bit more. I often use it for things like reminders or important notes as it has an icon and a background. And another thing that I love about the call out blocks is that you can actually add other block types inside of them. So just say I wanted this to do list inside of this block, I could just grab it and place it inside like this. There's also a divider block that you can use to separate different parts of your page. There's a table block, which is useful for capturing little bits of data. This is what it looks like. You can also add a header row. So if you just click on the options here, you can add a header row or a header column if you need to. And it's really easy to add extra rows or columns. If you just hover at the side, you can just click on this plus button and it will just add either another row or a column. And you can just click on the box to start typing. Another block that I use all the time is the toggle list. So in here, you can actually open up the toggle, write some information, and then you can open and close it whenever you need. So these are great if you want to add some extra information, but you don't want it to display on the page all the time. You can also embed a lot of different things onto your Notion pages, including images, PDF files, videos, and so much more. Let's say I want to embed a YouTube video. I could select this embed video block here, and we simply just paste in the link to the video. You can also upload a video if you have one downloaded. So let's just say that we want to embed this video of mine into Notion. So I can simply just copy the link here and paste it in here and click embed video. And that will embed the video like this. You can also use these bars on the side if you want to make it a little smaller. So let's make it a bit smaller so it's not so big. And if you do ever want to change the block type of something, you can do so if you just click on the six dots here, select turn into, and you can choose a different type of block. So let's say I want this one to be a bulleted list and that will update as you can see. You can also highlight multiple blocks at once like this, click the six dots and change them all at the same time. So let's say I want all of these to be a bullet list. As you can see, that's updated them all. Databases allow you to organize data inside of Notion and there's so much that you can do with them. Notion themselves describe their databases as filing cabinets or notebooks where you can file away information and they're super flexible. Notion offers six main types of database views. We have the table, gallery, board, calendar, timeline and list. These allow you to see the same data in different ways. And for each database that you have, you can set up multiple different views. So as an example, say you create a task list, you could create a table view and a calendar view. To add a new database, we can use the forward slash command and you can either scroll down until you find it or you can just start typing the word database and they will show up. Now you'll notice that there are two different types of database. We have inline and full page. Now the key difference is that inline databases will be added into the current page and you can add other blocks around them. Whereas full page databases will create an entirely new page just for the database and you can't add anything else to the page. Personally, I mostly use the inline databases so that I can add other elements around it. So let's add an inline Inline database and when you add a new database it will normally come up by default as a table view so let's just call this one task list as an example I'm just gonna add some tasks to the list just by clicking on the box here and just typing in the name so let's just add wash car so I've just added some tasks and if you need to add any more you can simply just click on this plus new button here and that will add another row now the first thing that you need to know about notion databases is that each entry within the database is actually a page so you can click on this open button here and that will open a page that is dedicated to this entry in the database 
space. So if you wanted to add any more information or notes, you could use this page to do so. So you can add various different properties to the databases. So let's just go on this one so I can show you the different property types. So here are all of the different property types that you can add into a database. So some of the ones that I use quite often are text, number, select, which allows you to select from multiple different options, date, you can even add a checkbox. So in this example, let's use a select property. So that will just display a drop down where you can select from one of different options and you can actually add the options to pick from here. So I'm gonna click on add an option and let's just add a priority level so we can add high and I'm just gonna hit enter and that's then gonna add it as an option, medium and low. Now each one will come up with a default color, but you can actually change the color. So if you just click on the option, it will allow you to pick a different one. So let's add red for high, medium can be yellow and low can be green. And I'm just going to change the name of this property to priority. So now on our table, if I click on this box next to our first task, it will ask me to select the priority from the list that we just added. So let's put this one as high, low and medium. You can also change the width of the columns here just by dragging it in like this. Now, as I said, this property here is a select property, but there is also a multi-select option. And the key difference between these is that with a select property, you can only select one option. Whereas with multi-select, you can select multiple options. So it's useful for things like a reading list or a movie list if you want to select multiple different genres. But in this case, for our task list, I think a select works better so that I can only select one priority type. Next, I think we're gonna add a date property. So to add another property to the table, you just simply want to click on this plus symbol here, and that will then bring up this little sidebar where you can select the property type that you want to add. So in this case, we're gonna add a date property. And now if I click the box next to one of the tasks, it's gonna bring up a calendar. So I can just select the date that applies. So let's just keep it as today's date. And another thing that I love about Notion is that you can toggle on a few different options. So if you wanted to add a date range rather than a single date, you can toggle on this end date and it will then ask you to select an end date. So I can actually put a date range as you can see. And if you also want to include the time, you can toggle this on and you can actually select a time of day as well. But for this example, I'm just gonna keep it as just the date. Let's add one more property. So I'm going to click again on this plus symbol and we're actually just going to add a checkbox property, which is this one. And let's just call this one complete so that I can check it off once the task is done. Okay, so this works as you can imagine. You can just check it off or uncheck it if you need to. Another thing that you can do with databases is that you can sort them based on different pieces of information. So let's say that I want to sort them based on their date. You can actually add a sort if you click on this button here and you can choose from the different properties within the table. So let's just use the date property here as an example. So this is currently set to date ascending which will go from the most current date to the most furthest date. But I could change it to descending if I wanted the latest date to show up first. So let's just keep it as ascending for now. We can also add a filter if you want to filter out pieces of information and these filters can get super advanced. You can add as many different conditions as you want, but let's just start by setting up a simple one. So let's just say that if I check off a task, I actually want it to disappear from our list. So let's set up a filter to do that. So I'm gonna click on filter. And again, you can choose which property in the table you want to base the filter on. So in this case, we're gonna go with our complete checkbox. And in this case, I want to only see items where the complete checkbox is unchecked. And once I've added that filter, as you can see, the item that was checked off has now disappeared. And if I check this one off, that one also disappears. Another thing that I love about databases is that if you hover at the bottom of a column, you'll see this calculate button appear. So if you're using a lot of numbers, this can come in really useful. In this case, I could just click on here and it'll give me a range of different options of things to calculate. Let's say in this case, I just want to count all so I can see how many tasks I have remaining. So in this case, we have one. If I added another one, as you can see, it goes up to two. So it's just quite useful in certain scenarios. Now, as I told you earlier, you can view databases in many different ways. So this, as you can see, is a table view, but we could convert this into a calendar view instead. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the three dots here and select layout. And as you can see, here are all of the different types of layout that you can choose from. So in this case, I think a calendar would work really well for a task list. So I'm just gonna select calendar. And as you can see, that is converted our database into a calendar. So here is the outstanding task that we have, and you can add more stuff to the database simply just by clicking on here. And we can just add in another task and it's automatically gonna add that date that I selected as the date property and I can fill in my priority level on here as well and if I just go back to the calendar as you can see that has now been inputted onto our calendar. Now you can use databases to create some really complex systems. There's several advanced features like relations, roll-ups and formulas that have almost an infinite amount of use cases. As an example I use these to set up a countdown to my deadlines, a gift tracker that calculates how much I've spent and a reading tracker that updates my progress. If you want to learn more about databases then I actually created an entire video which covers them in a lot more depth. I will leave a link in the description box to that video if you'd like to learn more. 
Notion has a ton of keyboard shortcuts that will save you a lot of time. They do have a post up on their website, which I'll link below, but here's a few of the most useful ones. So to quickly change your text color, you can type in a forward slash and then the color that you want to use. So let's just type in blue as an example. And then I can select either a blue text color or a blue background color. Let's go with blue text color. And then if I start typing, as you can see, the text is blue. You can use the keyboard shortcut Command B to bold text. You can use Command I to italicize text and you can use command U to underline text. You can also type a colon and then the name of an emoji. So let's just type a guitar as an example and that will then bring up the appropriate emoji and you can add it into the text. You can simply type a dash and then a space and that will bring up a bullet point list. You can type the more than sign and a space and that will bring up a toggle list. And you can also type in two square brackets like this and then a space and that will bring up a to-do list block. As Notion comes with the ability to embed things, several websites have now popped up that actually create Notion widgets. Now, my personal favorite one is Indify.co as their widgets are simple, they look great, and they have really good functionality. Now, Indify is completely free, but you do need to make an account. But once you're all logged in, you'll be able to see all of the different widgets that they offer. Now, one of my favorite ones is actually this weather widget here. So you can simply just click create widget and then you'll just need to give it a name and that will take you to the editor. So you simply will just input your location in here and that will then pull through the exact weather of your location. You can also change the unit. So I'm going to use Celsius as I'm from the UK. There are a ton of other settings you can play with as well. So as an example, you can change the background color and the text color. But once you're happy, you can click on this clipboard icon here to copy the link to the widget. And then back over in Notion, if you just type in forward slash and then grab the embed block, which looks like this, you can simply just paste in the link in here and click embed link and that will embed the widget into your Notion space. So here is the weather widget. And if you use these bars on the side, you can actually play around with the sides. So you can make it a bit smaller. I love that this one as well goes vertical. So you could put this in a sidebar if you wanted as well. Another one of the widgets that I love is the life progress bar, which looks like this. So it will show you how far along you are in the year, month, week, day, and even your life if you want to set your birthday in here, you can toggle on and off what you want to see. So I'm just going to switch a couple of these off. Again, you can play around with the colors here, but I'm just going to copy the link to this widget and let's go back to Notion. And again, just using the embed block, I'm just going to paste this in and this is what it looks like. So I'll just make it a bit smaller. And the final widget that I want to show you is the clock widget. So this is the default widget, but there are a ton of different clock styles. So you can go with a digital. I quite like digital solid because it's just very simple. But as I said, there are a ton of different options. You could go with something really crazy like analog planets, which looks like this. I'm not sure I quite understand what is going on here. Let's just stick with digital solid for this example. Again, you can play around with a ton of settings here, like the background color, the padding, things like that, but you can just click on the link here to copy it. And I've just embedded that here into Notion. And the final thing that I want to touch on is aesthetic. So I'm sure you've seen some beautiful looking Notion pages floating around the internet, but it can be hard to actually replicate these when you're just starting out. So here's a few that I've created. So this one, as I showed you at the start, is my Studio Ghibli themed dashboard. So this one is quite aesthetic looking. It has a ton of useful features and it even includes the weather widget here. I've also created this reading tracker, which shows all of the books that you're currently reading and have completed reading. And I've even set up this advanced second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. If you are interested in any of my templates, then as I said, please check this out on my store. It is available to download. So back to our Studio Ghibli example. So to actually make your Notion pages look better, I'd mainly suggest adding images so as you can see I've added images in here you can also add gifs so as you can see this one is actually a gif I got this one from giphy.com and you can add things like widgets so I'm just going to show you briefly how you can embed an image like this so you'll simply want to grab that embed block that I showed you earlier so let's just add something here under this Totoro so I'm just going to type in forward slash embed and select the embed block and then you just want to paste in the link to the image or you can upload an image using this tab as well so let's just go and grab an image so you can grab images from pretty much anywhere. I'm just gonna use Google Images, but you can use something like Pinterest or anything else. Let's just go with this one. So once you've found an image that you like, you just want to right click on it and select copy image address. And then back in Notion, you simply just want to paste that link in here and click embed link. And that is just gonna pull through the exact photo. So you don't have to bother downloading and re-uploading. You can just paste in the link and Notion will automatically grab it and pull it through for you. You can also try picking a color theme and sticking with it. So as you can see in this one, I've gone with green. So there are so many different green elements here from the text text color to the background colors of the blocks and the clock widget to the green on here and even the images themselves have a lot of green within them so that is one of the reasons as well why this actually looks really good as a whole because of the consistent color theme and finally using columns is a really good way to improve the look of your notion page and it can actually also make it easier to use
So as you can see here, I've got three main columns. We have this column here, this column in the middle, and then one here as well. So I'll just briefly show you how to add and resize columns. So I've just added this really quick to-do list in here, and we also have the widgets that I added earlier. So let's add some columns so that I can see these side by side. So all you need to do is just type in forward slash, and then just type in the word column, and you'll see various different block types appear for columns. So you can have between two and five columns. So in this case, let's just go with two columns, and that's gonna then add them in. So we are currently in the first one, and here is the second one. So I'm simply just gonna highlight these blocks here and click on the six dots next to them and just drag them up into the first column. So you'll know you're in the column when you see the blue line appear and I'm just gonna drop them in here. Now let's grab our life progress bar widget. So I'm just gonna grab that one and then I'm just gonna place it up here in the second column. So again, just looking for that blue line that only shows half of the page, drop it and it's now in our second column. Now, if you want to play around with the sizings of these, if you just hover in the middle, you'll see this gray bar appear. So you can actually just drag that to play around with the sizes so I could make this one really small and if you want to add more things into the column you can just place your cursor down here and you're now inside of the column so let's just add a call out block in here and as you can see it's just taking up this column but I could make it wider again if I needed to now you can actually favorite pages that you use all the time using this star button here in the corner. So I'm just gonna click that and this is now a favorited page. Now, if I hover over here, our side menu will appear. And as you can see, the dashboard has now been added under our favorites. So you can just click on these to navigate to the individual pages. And another thing that I love is if you click on this little arrow here, it will open up and show any sub pages that you have within that page. So again, you can easily navigate here. And if you have more sub pages, you can use the arrow again to navigate there. You can also move these around so you can just click on it and drag it to move it into a different position. And one final way to navigate around your Notion pages is using the search bar here. So if you just click on here, you can actually just type in the name of something you want to navigate to. So let's just say I want my Studio Ghibli dashboard. If you just type it in, it will appear here and then you can just click on it. And that's it. If you want to learn more about Notion, then I'd really recommend subscribing to my channel as I do upload new Notion tutorials twice a week from beginner friendly all the way to advanced. I'd also recommend checking out my pre-made Notion templates to help you get started. I will leave a link in the description box below.